Welcome to Reckless, a podcast making people smarter and more knowledgeable about parks and recreation. Your hosts are Shane Mize, Jay Tryon, and Tom Venero, three career-long friends from around the country, bringing their own unique and sometimes entertaining perspectives with a surprise guest each episode. This is Reckless. Welcome to our second episode of Reckless, a podcast designed in the image of the very popular podcast Smartless, where our goal here is to educate you all on on the field and industry of parks and recreation. I am your host today, Tom Venero, and I'm here with Jay and Shane. Hey guys, how are you? I'm good, man. How you doing? What's up? Not much. Looking forward to it. I think I've got a, a nice special treat for you both with our guest and and so before we get to that just opening up it is now july 14th 2023 we are i guess you would say in the heart of summer at least at least here i know everybody's summer might start a couple weeks before or after each other's but we're right in the middle right in the thick of it so i think to start off i was just kind of curious how are you guys summers going and what are what have been some of the challenges this summer now that we're i mean i hate to say this but you know we're Three years removed from COVID, we're, we're I think we're getting back to where, what we would think is normalcy, but there's still challenges that are coming, whether they are related to COVID or not. So I don't know, Jay, you want to get us started off? What's going on in your summer and what are some challenges you're going through? Well, I think what's interesting is like, and it happens to all of us, you know, we've been doing summer camp for so long, but there's still things that come up that come up for the first time, um, you know, and some of it is just scenarios happen here and there that you know you can't really plan for but summer camp's going well we got we're four weeks in you know we do 10 weeks of camp here so we're we're almost halfway Uh, I got about 22 locations running so we're we're slammed with kids I get you know between uh when it started to the end of the summer I'll have almost 7,000 kids in all of our camps but you know I think a couple problems we ran into is maybe some planning wasn't done as well as we could have from a camp perspective for trips you know we had our first week it literally rained every single day all of our trips that we scheduled were outdoors. So just trying to think about that in the future, making sure we got to have some backup plans for indoor trips. Um, But things are going well. I mean, we're booked solid. You know, we are not thinking or working with anything COVID related anymore. So that's good on our end. And uh, we haven't really seen the fear or the discussion from families that are asking about COVID restrictions. So, you know, we're quote unquote back to normal. Now, Shane, I know you got some some heat going on down there. Yeah, COVID can't live in Texas. It's too hot, apparently. Um, I, we're we're not so much worried about COVID. Um, our struggles this summer have been. Um, I've been here four years, and it, it's a town that's growing really quick. The Austin area is growing quick. Everything's trying to catch up around it, and uh, it was it was a smaller um, rural town for a long time, and it it had some deferred maintenance when when I got here. Um, I had 15 playgrounds, 14 years old or older. So we've been doing a lot of construction, a lot of repair and replacement. There's a pool right now that is being worked on, um, getting a new bathhouse and restroom and and offices. And all that was supposed to be done by the end of May. But we had a super wet um, winter and spring. Uh, We had 42 days of rain. We normally don't get that much. And uh, it's delayed everything. So, and, And my camp's an outdoor camp. And so they, they stay out outside for the majority of the time, other than when they're on field trips. Um, and so we've had to rent um, a, a Lions club next to us so we can beat the heat some. And then two or three locations they would normally stay at are under construction. So uh, it's, it's just been a summer of moving things around. And, and for us, we're, we're, <laughs> we're definitely seeing the resiliency of our staffing and our programs for sure. Um, and uh, it's one of those things where if you, you, what's that old saying? You ask God to make you tougher, that he didn't make you tougher. He gives you stuff that makes you tougher by going through it. Um, we're definitely doing that in, in, in a resiliency way for sure. That's interesting that both of you are experiencing some, some weather or climate related challenges. We are too, but not in the same, not in the same sense, but it's not necessarily heat or rain. We've been I think it hasn't been the the rainiest summer for us or even spring, but we're dealing with air quality issues. 
And so everything happening up above us in Canada right now is coming down occasionally when it when it when they first started the wildfires it was pretty rough around here people don't know what to do and and now with cell phones and everybody having a weather app on their hip it's so interesting because we're, we get so many people who are calling about the air quality the air quality and you know it's probably nothing compared to what obviously they're dealing with right in the thick of it but we've had to cancel a few days be, uh, of sports and things like that because of air quality which is super unique so it's like you know one challenge we moved past three years ago we get to some other challenges we've had the last couple years and now we have a completely new one that we've never dealt with before i hear that it is going sometimes as far down south as texas have you had any or, or north carolina have you had any issues with this air quality from these wildfires for us, we haven't, although I have seen the photos of people posting in, in New York City and the state, and yeah. that stuff's been incredible looking at uh, what those wildfires and some of those things, have how, how they've affected y'all. But um, if it's floated down to us, it's just come down as pollution at this point. I, we don't see a color change or anything like that. Yeah, we had a day or two, maybe two weeks ago, and it, it wasn't significant, but like you could tell there was something different in the air. Uh, but it was literally like a 24 hour thing. So it was really just the way the wind shifted those few days, got it down here and I haven't seen it since. So I do know yeah. back home, like you said, you know, back in where my family is, my brother is in Buffalo, like they've dealt with it um, quite often. And my brother being a teacher and a coach and my son or my nephew playing sports, like they've had to kind of shift some practices indoors or just cancel practices in some scenarios. So it's definitely more impactful up North for sure. Yeah, it's been wild. The the you mentioned the sky colors, the the smell. It's just very eerie, and it's it's not every day. It, there's really no rhyme or reason to me. Obviously, we're not in the middle of the fires, but it's it's been very odd, and you could feel it in your eyes. You can feel it when you breathe a little bit, and, and so it's it's interesting. These conversations, I love having these with you guys, and and this is so great that we're doing this, that we're able to do it a little more often, and we have a great guest to get to. So I don't want to delay too much, but I do have a question related to the heat. So we had, I just came back from Florida. We talked about that last episode. I heard about the the pretty intense heat in Texas. So when I was in Florida, we were getting days of 95, 96, 97. And the, the feels like index or whatever you call that was 106, 107, right? So it it was, it felt pretty hot. The day I was traveling back to New York, we had a heat advisory in New York. It was 87 degrees feels like 91. And so after coming from Florida and, and these heat advisors, I mentioned that with a, with our cell phones, our parents get these and they see it and they, they read the heat advisor and like, should we be going out? Are we supposed to be playing baseball, playing soccer at camps? And Shane, you mentioned this, you, your camps are outside where you're from in Texas. I just feel like we're, we're in a real tough spot. There's been a lot of interesting cancellations based on these advisories Whereas where you're from, you're talking 10 to 15 degrees warmer. And I, you know, I don't see how, I don't see how it's comparable, but have you had, you don't have to cancel anything because of this heat. These advisories come out and you just pretty much deal with it as it is pretty standard time of year weather, right? So that Lions Club, uh, they're right next to the park. They're the, they're the parcel of property right next to the park. And we're paying them 10 grand this summer uh, for us to go in there Monday through Thursday and, uh, at times just beat the heat for the kids to be in there because uh, right now I have a rec center, you know, quality of life standards should tell you a rec center should be one square foot per population. I have a 75,000 population town and I have a 23,000 square foot rec center. Now we're building a 120,000 square foot facility that we can grow into for the next, you know, 20 years, but we don't have it yet. And so there's not a lot of places for camp to go. So camps and outside camp, um, Texas has always been great in June. The nights normally in Texas in June, some of, some of the best nights are May and June, but this summer has just been a really hot summer. Um, it got hot early. Um, it feels hot everywhere. It feels hot in the shade. It feels hot inside your house. It's tough to get the air to come down. Um, it's just been a really hot summer. And so um, we had to rent from the Lions Club just to just to make sure that our, our kiddos had a reprieve, someplace they could go in and and not be exposed to that heat the whole time. And we're, we're looking at ozone days and the days that we have to be super aware of that. And the kids are in the water a lot. And uh, there's a creek right next to some of these parks and they hop in the creeks as well. But um, we're trying to keep them as cool as possible. They have popsicles and stuff that we have breaks for, including my staff. We have ice cream and 
Gatorades and water stocked in our fridges and our break rooms for, for our staff as well. And it's, it's definitely something you're trying to mitigate down here that I, I don't know if other folks deal with it, but we are, and it's a hotter summer than it's been in a long time for us. Well, all right, we'll, we'll get to it. Another challenge, and I could talk about this for days, but one other challenge relating to what Jay had mentioned was the amount of staff and kids that you have in full operations is retention and finding new young staff to work programs. That was something we, we dealt with again this summer. Uh, we've dealt with it for the last few years. We're on waiting lists for most of our summer camps, and I could imagine that there's situations like that similar across the uh, across the country, but we're, we still struggle to find those part-time staff where it didn't seem like that was the case. Uh, a few years ago. So either way, let's get moving on. I'm going to give you a few hints as to who our guest is. All right. So our guest today is, this is the best hint of all, someone we all know. The guest is an Academy member. Hmm. Narrows it down a little more. Okay. The next few kind of give it away. But our guest has presented for nearly 40 state associations. News. Also a Springfield alum, which again, probably gave it away because those Springfield alum are very proud of being Springfield alum. <laughs> sure. And in my opinion, this guest is synonymous with mentoring, mentorship, and just uh, just being a mentor. So without further ado, I think you all probably have a good idea who it is, but I'd like to welcome our guest. Chris Noons, our Chief Operating Officer from the Woodlands, Texas. Hey, boys. How you doing? <laughs> Good. What's going on? Well, I'm not in Texas today. I'm up uh, enjoying some uh, cooler weather up in New Hampshire. Um, okay. And uh, escaped it a little bit and uh, been working remotely this week. Uh, I got the privilege of uh, doing that um, and uh, still working 12, 13, 14 hour days, but at least I get to go. Uh, in a lake at night that's probably 65 degrees. So uh, there is one perk of moving one more level up than what many of you guys are doing. So sure. <laughs> news is on my list too. Great pull. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he, he he'll hit us off the home run to start. So you know, I wanted to thank him for coming. I think we'll have a great conversation today. I'm going to start off with the first question based on what I led into this introduction of Chris, and that was mentorship. I want to start by just mentioning that for, for those who may not know, or, or uh, maybe many of you do, but uh, Chris is, is the first ever recipient of the Dirk Richwine Professional Mentoring Award, which is, the, yes, yes, very big congratulations to Chris. It's the first year that this award has been given out by NRPA. It is uh, there. There really is no one more deserving, and and I know that Chris and Dirk Richrein had a, a an amazing relationship and, and friendship. So I'm sure it means a ton to to you, Chris. I mean, I know it does. You know, I like to just put out a little anecdote that I've known Chris for a long time now, considered him a mentor for a long time, but just recently, never in a formal capacity, we worked together on a few different projects. The the back when the mentorship program with the uh, network system started that was a project that Dirk had, uh, Dirk and Chris had pulled me in on to work when I was a part of the young professional network so that was kind of when I first was exposed to Chris and Dirk at the same time and most recently though over the last I'd say year uh, Chris has kind of pulled me under his wings in more of a formal mentorship role and, and he's added to me to this this group that he has and so this is just a great anecdote uh, you know to give you all kind of a a comparison i think of him as a as one of the great nfl coaches who have a coaching tree all right so like a bill parcells a bill walsh and he sends me out he includes me in on this email probably sometime after conference last year and we've been going back and forth but this email had about 20 ish 25 people on it and it was it was right around i think thanksgiving wishing everybody a happy thanksgiving and it's a group of these these uh these the people that he's mentored and and I'm sure there's so many more than the 20 or 24 25 on the list but such a great touch to reach out and keep in touch and con and, and put us all into contact with each other as well so I just I'm thankful to be a part of that and to have had Chris be a, a mentor in my career but Chris that's really my my question for you to start off is you know mentorship that's been such a big big part of what you do you know why why is that what does it mean to you and, and how do you approach it wow <laughs> We only have how long? Um, 
you know, let's let's go back to Dirk first and, and foremost. Um, you know, I, I first met Dirk, I want to say in 2002, 2003. And here I am, you know, a um, still a younger professional, not a young professional, but a younger professional uh, director of community services in Colorado. And here's this this guy who just reached his hand down. And, and I was amazed by his knowledge. And, and, you know, there's some people in our profession that you're like, wow, that person is really intelligent. I got to go, you know, I got to go learn from that person. He was one of those for me. And then I think over the course of almost 20 years, we just saw kindred spirits of what our approaches, what our philosophies were. And, and really they were, a lot of them, a lot of the approaches and philosophies were really surrounded or centered around, you know, growth and development. And now that I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm, um, you know, an elder statesman of parks and recreation, mm-hmm. but I'm kind of, you know, seeing that horizon. Um, you know, I'm really committed now of my professional development. Um, you know, I don't need to be a chair of any other committee. I don't need to be, you know, this or that. I, I see the role uh, that I can be of really doing what Dirk did to me, even uh, to a, a greater degree of reaching out, reaching that hand down and say, come with me and let me help, you know, expose you to different things that you might not have the opportunities to be exposed to, whether it be at a state level, a national level through, hey, listen, here's a great, here's a really good person to talk about park development versus aquatics versus some of the commercial stuff that we do. Um, that That's what I'm, I'm getting out of it. And um uh, yeah, that list is getting longer. Um, every, every single year, I think I've added probably about three or four, actually probably four or five more uh, people that I'm on uh, pretty much uh, monthly calls uh, with. So uh, the list grows and hopefully their list is growing as well. I got something. I First of all, I love the conversation about Dirk too. You know, Dirk would have been someone that we'd have loved to have had on this as well. Um Absolutely. Because you know, you always learn something from Dirk. Um, he had such a great temperament. He was almost, I was on the program committee with him and I saw him get reclassed from a parks and rec department in a agency yeah. to going to the police department. And it didn't register like you, like you, you, nothing even, you know, like if it was a heart rate monitor, it didn't even blip up. He just handled it so smoothly. Um, but what I loved about, Dirk and what I've always appreciated about noons is the time and capacity you have to reach down. I think all of us mentor at one time or another, we've been assigned folks or we've found folks or people have reached out to us, found us in some capacity. I am terrible at having the bandwidth to, I mean, I'm, I'm great at making sure me, Tom and Jay are pretty good or me, Tom and Jay and a couple other people, or maybe since we're all, all four of us and a couple other people we all really care about are in this one chat. We can, we can engage that one chat and celebrate successes and, and even commiserate with anything that happens that's sad. But um, how do you have the capacity to reach down like you are and have the energy for it? Oh, wow. Um, It's easy. Uh, It's, 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 it's so somewhere in 1991, when I was in my first little recreation class in um, in Springfield, this thing hit me of this is where I need to be. This is really where I need to be. And um, originally, you know, I wanted to be a teacher. Um, I, I wanted to be a teacher, but I realized that you know, I want to be a, a PE teacher, a physical education teacher, even though <laughs> you look at me, well, we're, we're, we're tough there. Um, but I it, it just wasn't going to be a fit for, for me. So I found Parks and Recreation. And one of the elements of Parks and Recreation that I still take today is about the growth and development of the individual. And now that I've gotten older, um, when I present things, um, I, I, you guys were talking about recruitment and retention. Uh, Tom, Tom, you were talking about recruitment and retention of, of staff. I've really changed the narrative on the recruitment and retention of staff to being recruitment and retention has to be about um, you know, you've got to convert your recruitment program to thinking of it like a recreation program. And it's the same thing that I think of, you know, all the stuff that I deal with is my job is not to grow and develop, you know, kids in my recreation program, um, uh, uh, families in my, in my, in my community, you know, my responsibility or the, and I've, I've chosen that responsibility is to really help 
everybody grow. And so when you're seeing these successes, you just get amped up, you know, um, uh, Shane, you, you know, Kate, Kate Meekum. Uh, actually, I think all of you guys know Kate uh, Meekum, who was Kate Schneider before, you know, seeing her go from a, um, you know, a kid basically right out of college and I hired her and we've had, you know, especially the first 10 years, plus or minus, had tons of conversations and seeing her now be the director of Parks and Recreation in Allen, Texas, a very well regarded uh, uh, department. Wow, that's really cool. Seeing people, you know, re reach out to me of saying, hey, listen, Chris, thanks a lot that, you know, we did a, a, a job interview prep and man, I hit the nail on the head with that interview. I mean, that's how that's what gets me through the day, you know. Uh, you know, you guys are a little bit uh, further behind than me. You, you're still building facilities. You're still doing the X, Y. I've done a lot of that stuff. And I'm I'm now kind of the grandfather of the Parks and Recreation Department because I've got a Parks and Recreation Director now. And so I'm checking in with them. But this stuff keeps me moving on a daily basis. And so that's how I ha have the time for it. You know, I, I, I take calls. They're not every day or anything like that, but of, you know, um, mentees you know i've got two uh that are, are struggling right now one in the Dal dallas area and one who was a friend of a friend of a friend who reached out to me who's in who is in um, west texas and hey they're texting me hey yeah and so it's, it's just you know it's just like any other email that you you process through of trying to give the best advice at the right time and and, and you just get it done because you know the 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 purpose and the power of parks and recreation is so important that if they're doing better and if you can provide them just a little advice to do better they're going to their, their communities are going to realize the power of parks and recreation so before anybody else goes i have a kate meacham chris noon story i'm in i'm in dfw fort worth has assigned me the director of what that time was the two three region workshop which for us is a pretty big now it's the north region it's the biggest region in texas this is a big workshop it's like a state workshop for a lot of smaller states. And uh, I'm the chair of it. And Kate has just moved to the area. And Noons is someone you know of before you get to meet, right? That's just what it is. And so Kate's been assigned to my team. And we've got people from all over the North uh, Texas region helping us put on this workshop. And she's on the program side. And she was like, what do you want for programs? I was like, you know, there's a guy named Chris Noons. I'd love to have him come up and present. Kate steps away from the table, calls Chris says this is the date you're coming down and doing two sessions he said he he was like yeah sure whatever you need and i was just blown away about how how great of a how great of a connection chris news was where he immediately would take the call no matter what was going on and uh how comfortable kate felt as someone had been mentored by him by saying we need you we need you this date and news was was all game so it was a really cool moment for me and it's great to see where Kate's landed as well yep well I'm gonna add a, a comment about the mentorship and then we'll kind of lead into another question you know obviously I we've all had great stories we could tell with Dirk and um, I think that's one of the beauties of Dirk in our profession is everyone knew him everyone loved him everyone had a you know a different story about it whether it was you know helping with an agency grow whether it was about mentorship um, I met Dirk and it was tied to Capra and Dirk got me involved with Capra and I probably wouldn't have done that if I didn't know Dirk. And, you know, I ended up having Dirk as a formal mentor, uh, but then which led to more of just a personal conversation, personal meetings. I actually ended up going to Denver one year, had dinner with him and his wife, and it was not just about work. I mean, I got to know him as a family man and, and hanging out with his family, which I can proudly say I had that with Chris now too. So Chris was in Charlotte a few weeks ago or a few months ago now. We went out to dinner and obviously like we're together from a work atmosphere, but we're also just shooting the breeze, talking about family and friends and everything. So I kind of transitioned that to the next point is what Tom mentioned when he was doing the introduction about, you know, speaking at state conferences everywhere you can possibly think of. And, you know, that's another aspect that you've given back to the community. And, and I've done it a little bit. Tom's doing a little bit. I, I'm trying to pull Shane in as much as I can, but, you know, he's not maybe uh, the most open to, to speaking in front of a lot of people or, you know, maybe he just doesn't like people. Who knows? But well, you do it all the time, and I've seen an impact personally, and um, I actually have the pleasure of, you know, speaking alongside you with Dirk yeah, um, at my very sure. first time presenting a conference, which was amazing. But, you know, and aside with the mentorship, you know, you're giving back one-on-one, -on -one, but then you go to these state associations, you go to these conferences, and you're constantly speaking, you know, that's another time commitment, but also something that you've been known for 
you know, how have you managed to continue that at such a high level? And, you know, what keeps you motivating to do that since you're constantly being asked by states everywhere in the country to do that? Um, you know, I, I tell a lot of people and, um, Jay you, <laughs> Jay, you watch the Buffalo Bills, right? And, um, you know, you're passionate about the the Buffalo Bills. You know, all of you have your own recreation and leisure. Um, to be honest with you, standing up in front of five people, educating them, or 500 is really a leisure experience for me. Yeah. Um, it is, I'm the most relaxed when I'm up in front of people. I'm having this positive experience and you know, kind of giving back and hopefully people are, are, are responding. Um, and, and so it's just a, it's just a fun thing for me to do. And so, but more importantly, um, you know, everybody says, Oh, Chris, you've done all these sessions and that type of stuff. Every time I go out to a place, you know, whether it be North Dakota, Alaska, California, you know, I've spoken in Maine and Florida and in the Midwest is I'm taking stuff back to my department and my agency <laughs> and, and, and I'm stealing and I'm stealing and I'm stealing. And one of the things that I, I, I do is I end up, um, so I'm, I'm speaking in Florida, I think in August. And so one of the kind of things that I've learned over the last three or four years is I will import a whole bunch of pictures into my sessions on purpose from the respective agencies. Well, that, and, and I pr pretty much take them from Facebook, but that makes me go through their Facebook side and look at their activities and look at their program and look at how they're marketing. And so I'm learning and bringing it back over to my, um, my, 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 my agency. For example, um, you know, Jen, Jen Basham, uh, uh, Burlinson, uh, Burlinson, right guys, Texas, um, oh. you know, she just opened a park and says, you know, welcome to your new park in the little funk, funky little letters that are, you know, the thing I'm sending that to my staff and like, Hey, you know, could we do that? We've got a pickleball court opening, um, I think on the 22nd and they're like, okay, we can take a look at it. And so boom, you know, it's constant learning, constant growing, constant developing, of myself, but also our own agency as well. And so again, the people get something out of that. So I do take a lot of vacation time uh, to do all the, all those sessions, but it is, you know, a, a, a small payback. You know, this is, this is, this is what I live for. You know, it's, it, it, it's great. And having that and having really that platform to try to push the, push the uh, profession um, and, and, and challenge them to, to think differently of how they, they, they operate. Um, cause we, we all can get, um, better or just hopefully there's a nugget that people are taking away from when I, when I speak to say, Hey, let's go try this. And hopefully it, it works for them. Well, I know we had a lot of takeaways when you were here in Charlotte a few months back, and I still constantly get some feedback from staff and they really liked it. So I appreciate, appreciate you that coming here and you know, look forward to seeing you in another state sometime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Chris just came from New York in April. Very similar timing, probably Jay to when he was in your area. So, I mean, it's, he seems to be everywhere <laughs> all the time. It's amazing. And, and in New York, even that to just add to some of what Chris does too, he came and he was, he was our keynote this year and sure enough, two other sessions, you know, it's, it's, it's something where whenever we ask Chris to, to provide, it's not a one and done type of situation. He's willing to share. And I think, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, your session list is insane. It's it's got to be approaching what 75 different topics at this point. It's 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 pushing that, and some of them are merged, some of them are taken part, some of them are like three session three sessions or topics in one, and so it, you just get this thing. And what it what it has done for me is, is created an ultimate comfort level of talking about anything at any one time. If so, somebody's got a question. And it relates to a session, you know, that that maybe I did last month. I can pull three or four tidbits from that session. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's not that, oh, I'll have to get back to her. Maybe we can talk about that on the side. It's, you know, it gets reinforced. And so the the the, the flow becomes so natural um, in, in the session. So, Chris, tell me a little bit about you said something earlier about having your own parks and recreation director now and so Ooh. you and i have had a conversation and i'm sure that we're not the only people that have had this conversation in fact i've seen at least a, a handful of people that we've been connected yeah. to or close to at one point or another 
that we all know who have transitioned from Parks and Rec specifically to a management, a city management or town leadership or uh, something in, in that realm or a different role. And you've somewhat done that. It also sounds like you have a really great tie and still are connected very heavily with your parks and recreation. And for someone like me, I'm so passionate. I think we all are, but I'm so passionate about what we do with parks and recreation. That would be the biggest challenge is to take that leap and not be able to allocate as much of that passion to parks and recreation. And I'm sure we can find our passion somewhere else, but tell me, tell us about your experience with that and, and you know, how you've made that work. So, so the, um, my, um, my supervisor, when I was a parks and recreation director had talked to me off and on about when he was going to retire and, and such. And there was kind of this unspoken thing that, you know, there was, there would probably be an opportunity for me to move up at some point. And so he walks in one day, says, Hey, listen, I know we've been talking about retirement, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you know pretty soon. And this was early December of 2021. And so I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to talk about it, you know, at the end of the year or start of next year. And two hours later, he comes in and says, I'm retired. Mm. And I was like, Oh crap. And then the next day, uh, the quote unquote city manager comes in and says, Oh, you're the new assistant general manager, chief operating officer. And so, you know, go back to Dirk, I'm on the phone with him. You know, this was the last couple couple weeks of his life. And we were working through some of those, you know, things and feelings and that type of stuff. And I'll be honest with you, Tom, it was really, really difficult. Um, you know, that first six, eight months of, you know, who am I? You know, I've invested 30 years almost into this thing called Parks and Recreation. I have you know, three degrees in the field. Um, I'm recognized as a, as a, as a leader of the parks and recreation movement and just like overnight, Oh, you're not doing that anymore. And it's like, Whoa. And so I had to compartmentalize it mentally come to grips with it that actually, you know what, it's not that bad because the department, you know, I've, I've been a leader of that department for 16 years, like anything, you know, new ideas need to be brought into it. And so I had to kind of suck it up and take it on the chin um, and some of the stuff that the staff is doing is phenomenal, you know, um, but because it is one of the three, four departments that I oversee, I still get to play, if that makes sense. And 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 I, and I had a conversation with my Parks and Recreation director of saying, listen, I'm, I, I want to see a lot of the uh, bigger capital projects uh, be pushed through. Uh, on the 20th of uh, this month, we believe we will be getting a 200 108 acre parcel of land, which is monumental for us. It's really going to be probably a 20 year project. Um, we have another 2000 uh, acre parcel of uh, uh, open space that I've probably got the most natural resource planning, you know, uh, natural resource recreation, natural resource planning experience. And so I'm going to be looked to to take some leaders. So my hands are wet. Uh, it's just not dealing with uh, the day camp. And last night I had to deal with the day camp issue because my parks and recreation director, assistant director, rec superintendent were all out. So, you know, the buck stops here and I'm, I'm really glad I don't have to deal with those on a daily basis. Um, uh, do I miss it? Yeah, but ab absolutely, you know, dealing with a mom who's concerned about their child being bullied uh, in, in the summer camp is it's not the, the the where I want what I want to do on a daily basis, and so I, I've come to to the grips with that. But I th I think what it really is um, a, a function of of why I'm able to feel comfortable in this matter is we spent 15, 16 years of building those staff. Um, you know, we went in my my time. We went from one certified parks and recreation professional. I think we're up to 23 or 25. And so really trying to create a culture of professionalism um, and expectations and and, and, and and streamlined business practices. And of course, the, the biggest thing, and I think where many people uh, know they've heard me say these words, really creating relevant programs and services for our community that you know people are engaged with, uh, not programs that we like as staff, but what are needed by our communities. Let me ask you something, Chris. Uh, last episode, we had Katie Keller on and oh, yeah. promoted into a new director role. And we talked about um, imposter syndrome feels pretty high when you step into a role you've never done before, right? And it, it would be, I don't know if Tom and Jay would agree, but it'd be tough for me to yeah. believe that you have any confidence issues 
stepping into this COO role. Did you have any imposter? Have you felt any imposter? No, I, I really didn't because a lot of the areas that I have been dealing with, I they were they were very very intuitive. Okay, and and they're yeah, it's operational, and this is what we do is operations, and so you know I have um, uh, transportation. So you know, a park and ride system, as well as a internal trolley system, internal collector system in our community. So it's very easy. Service, 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 efficiency. How do we get the most out of the few dollars that we have for this program? I deal with uh, our covenant administration code enforcement. So how do we improve the customer service? How do we streamline the performance? So it's very in, in, intuitive. And then just relationship building with utilities, other governmental uh, functions are another large part of, of what I do. Um, so it was very intuitive. And to some extent, I was doing probably a fair amount of it already, just not to the a group. I can tell you if I was um, going to and saying, hey, listen, I'm in the um, you know, supervising the, the city attorneys or something like that, I think, yeah, that would have been more of a stretch for me but since most of the stuff that i'm supervising is operations um it was a little bit easier but i d you, you do say and i i think um shane you may have done, known john powers um just a, a, a brief bit um uh, during your time uh, uh, in your, your earlier period in texas and i i moved to his office probably about four or five months after my promotion and for the first two weeks, I was like, um, I'm not him. I'm not him. Do I, am I in the right place? You know, felt uncomfortable. Yeah, I did. I've got another thing for you. So I have Baze. Baze works for me. Baze is a yeah. employee and he has been great. He's come in and hit the mark and is running. Um, and I think it's a testament to you and your group. And it's a testament to Baze, obviously, and in, in his ambition. Um, but you've seen the young professional mindset ambition maybe drive potentially change over the course of your career we have as well we i don't know what it would feel like to be a young professional today in a in a in a tiktok generation and um what you'd have to feel comfortable or not feel comfortable doing um but i'm sure you have some opinions on if you were a young professional today how would you enter this field differently than maybe you would have 10 years ago 15 years ago etc I don't know if I, I if I can actually answer that question. Where I, where I think you are going is, you know, and, and I don't want to say the problem with the new new generation because, trust me, my generation was a problem to the the sure. previous generation of they didn't work and they didn't do this and they didn't do that. You know, I remember, um, you know, I'm I'm classified as a generation Xer, and I remember watching uh, the first uh, the first couple seasons of Real World and Road World Road Road Rules or whatever the hell the the thing is called. And like, that's not me. You know, I was already busting my butt at, when I was a director of parks and recreation, like 23 years old, where I think the challenge for all generations, um, and especially now that, you know, our focus is on, you know, eight second reels or 15 second reels is this concept of, you know, delayed gratification versus instant gratification, that it, it takes time and to grow the skills and it's not the 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 hard skills because yes you can do a basketball program or you can run a summer camp for jay and do a really good job but it's where the 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 soft skills need to be developed and the soft skills almost take more time of you know communication of the customer service of you know the analyzing the political acumen and, and political acumen doesn't mean necessarily you know what I do with the board but just you know an awareness of what's going on in your community even at the lower levels uh, a rec coordinator level that takes time you know um, I, I have the discussion all the time of you know has that when they when they're ready to be promoted have they had as a recreation quarter to a recreation super have they had enough knives in the back you know, where people are trying to back and they figured out how to provide solutions to that. You know, they didn't get ang angry because we all can get angry at residents, understand, but you have to move past that and say, okay, you know, I'm not going to be a jerk because 1% of our community is really, really tough to work with. The other 99% is great. And that's what I try to convince the staff is focus on the 99%, not the 1%, and you'll make it through. You have to acknowledge the 1% and deal with the 1% to be able to continue to move up and and grow and develop from that standpoint. I'd like to maybe just stop for a second and, and put
play a little game with you guys. So this is uh, Ooh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it's so funny. It, and this is going back to a lot of what Chris said, a lot of what you all said. Chris mentioned earlier of how he wants to help people attain their goals. He was one of the first people I talked about this idea. So this podcast that we're doing right now. I said, Chris, I got something I'm really excited about. Shane and, and Jay and I just got off the phone. And, and you could see Chris, when you t- when you give him an idea, he ponders, thinks about it, and then gives you a great uh, a great answer. And he's always he's always very thought provoking. And anyway, we got back on, and that this was a this was I don't know a month ago, right? When we first had the idea. Then when I asked him to be a guest earlier or a few weeks ago we we talked about his appearance and we, again just adding to what sloppy, we do right he, his appearance is pretty sloppy if, if we are writing it <laughs> well i got i got a used microwave up here i'm in my mother-in-law's attic you know i mean <laughs> you, you didn't have to share any of that nobody was gonna see it <laughs> but, but at, at, at least so, he didn't hate the idea when you showed him the idea that we were thinking about this and he didn't think it was awful because he wouldn't be here today that's right no no he, he you could tell he was questioning it he's like man i think these guys are crazy no he was real <laughs> supportive and then when we talked so crazy. Uh, again when i asked him to be the guest he thought he said hey how about this game and I'm like, oh, that's great. And so this is something that I think, you know, this is going to be cool. We can do this and, and do different types of games like this with our, our many different guests. But today's game is one word association. So I'm putting everybody on the spot here. Shane okay. and Jay, your job is to give Chris. So we want to get this out of our guests, not necessarily out of us as hosts. Your job is to find a phrase or a word. It could be more than a phrase. It could be a sentence on your end to give to Chris. Chris's job is to give us his opinion or his take on it in one word. All right. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start with something that we've talked about, but staff retention and hiring. Can I use more than one word or just one word? One word. I'll give you two. There's opportunities. Okay. It's going to be hard for us not to want to elaborate on these, but but we'll, <laughs> we'll go through them. And then if we have any, we want to talk about, we can. Okay. Shane, you got one. I'm ready. Go ahead. Probably the, the hottest topic that everyone talks about that either people love it or they hate it. Pickleball. Mm. <laughs> One word, man. That's all you got. <laughs> Entitled. Okay. Honest. Virginia boys lacrosse. Heartbreaking. Needs a sun plays for that team. <laughs> yeah, it was heartbreaking. All right. How about parks and recreation as an industry? Municipal parks and recreation. Uh, municipal parks and recreation professionals overhaul. All right, here's a fun one, just a joking one. Parks and Recreation, the TV show. Never watched. Wow, all right. So I can join that boat. I've never seen an episode in my entire life. You guys need to quit this profession. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm also the same guy that, like, doesn't watch any of the shows that you guys love. Like, I've never seen Ted Lasso. I have never seen The Office. I've never, like, I just don't watch that type of television. Sure, sure, yeah. Like, you talk about, like, crime and, like, uh you know law and orders and stuff like that chicago pd like that's up my alley i love that stuff so i just don't do a lot of comedies all right all right fair enough and and you know chris you mentioned the buffalo bills earlier i I really would like to go one episode without talking about the buffalo bills i I hear (laughs) hear it enough here and i get to see jay's grin every time someone mentions it so we'll see what happens in episode three so Um, just for that we will make sure And I think hopefully Shane will have my back on this. Every episode, we will talk about the bills in some capacity. (laughs) By the way. Okay, go back to the word association game. What about um, good book recommendation? Hmm. Like uh, Maxwell's leadership books. They're easy reads. What about? So we were talking earlier about you being a speaker. And obviously, like, you know, Tom and Shane and I, you know, we get together every year at conference. You know, that's kind of our one time a year we hang out for a whole week and so we talk about you as a speaker. Who is, in one word, the one speaker that you look forward to seeing? Or if you are looking at all the sessions, if they're speaking, you're there. I really love, uh, um, I think, Ryan Henerges, uh from Colorado. Very, very intelligent um, yeah. individual. Yeah. I think Great. his perspectives are different. Um, and, and that's why I really like seeing him, um, you know, and, and I would gravitate towards a session that, that he does, uh, because I, and I think that's kind of, I know this is more than one word, but I think that's where I kind of give yeah. people as well as he does something different, completely different than I do. And, and that's perfectly fine. But 
we go to these sessions sometimes like, okay, I heard this a hundred thousand times um, yep. or, or in the same way, mine, I might be some information new to you, some, but it's that different perspective, the different thought process of how I'm comprehending it and trying to provide to you. But I, I really like Ren, uh, Ryan's work and um, I was privileged to be with him on the uh, revenue management school in Ogilvy for a few years. Wow. I mean, you totally broke the rules, but I will <laughs> say, I will say that, it's a teaser, maybe a future guest right there. Ryan's great. Ooh, he does bring very unique ideas. And every session I've ever seen of his, which has only been a couple, there are topics that I've never seen anyone else cover. Yep, yep. 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 Ryan and Noons both appeal to me in such a way. First of all, y'all do something very unique. You're right. But you do it differently than anyone else is doing it, which I like because there are people that do different things, but then there's a whole cult of people that follow that. And they're all doing that as well. Um, what I've one time said about noons is I don't like to read stuff. I like to have noons read it and then filter it through. Tell me his opinion of it. And I feel the same way about Ryan and what Ryan does. I, I would just as much like to hear Ryan's opinion on a book or a movie or on some sort of legislation as I would me going through and pouring through it myself. I feel the same way about noons and his opinion and filter on things. Another word association, future of the Academy in our industry and the industry how about we you've already asked the and the industry the future of the academy i've already used the word opportunities i i think there's some challenges for that group there there really is and i'm a i'm a member of of the group been a member since uh i think i got in in 2012 about nrpa conference it's complicated <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll end it on i think what would be a a toss up for you or a T put it right on a T mentorship participate I like that love it wait so, we got to add one more okay we got one more and this one's partly for Shane but it's obviously Chris has to answer round tables mm. like round table sessions <laughs> hashtag the worst there's a little inside here but it's NRPA related or if it's it's park and rec related but enter round table sessions as a general statement acceptable Noon okay. does not do roundtables. You don't go to a noon session and he talks for 15 minutes and then he says, hey, look to your left, look to your right, talk to these people for the next hour. Like that, that rarely happens in a noon session I've been to. Noons is there to give information and for you to process it. What I hate about roundtables, if they're monitored or moderated in some way, they're probably passable. But what we see a lot in our industry is someone will speak 15 minutes on something then they'll say, break up into groups and y'all talk about it. And we're all going to talk about it at the end. Well, I didn't come to hear what Barb from Omaha thinks about this topic. I came to hear about what the speaker thinks about this topic. And I'm shocked we give CEUs for it because no minutes of actual education. Where, where I was going with this is uh, I was thinking more roundtables in um, the schools that we do for NRPA, where there's a set side and then they'll have discussions at each table and that, that's not bad. I do agree with you, Shane, of the purpose is to convey the information, especially when you're only in that hour block now. Um, that's not a lot of time to convey information of giving background information, setting up, you know, whether it be three, four, five steps to, you know, a plan or how to or how to solve a problem. And then also bring in, hopefully, the presenter's experience of what worked well and what didn't work well. I think one of the things that people really, really like about my sessions that I, that I do is, you know, I tell people where I failed, not that where I've been a success. And we've got to learn from the failures to be able to elevate, you know, you know, uh, a lot of my sessions I say all the time is I just want to be 51% right. So that means I'm trying to different things and, and working through, but yeah, your, your, your point of I'm only speaking for 15 minutes and then it's like coasting for the other 45 minutes. Uh, th those are, those are a challenge. I, I, my acceptable was in that school format. I, I think the school format, obviously good intention has impacted the presentation format, which is that is so impactful at the schools where people have all day to, yeah. to do that type of discernment discussions and then report to a bigger group, people are like, oh, this is great. I'll do this at the next conference. And it's been to our detriment because I don't think we get any smarter getting 15 minutes here and 30 minutes of discussion. One other thing I want to do before we lose noons, I don't know how much longer we have with them. Um, when I do speak, and I don't speak very often, I usually use 
news as an example. Um, and it's, it, it talks about how I lead. Um, I have, I have, I'm a, I have a mentee under Chris Nunes. I've considered that uh, something that I'm very proud of that over the years, he takes my calls and gives me advice and, and calls me and checks on me from time to time and see how everything's going. But I, I actually use Chris as the reason I don't like director school or trying to emulate somebody in, in this field, because what I say is I will get two or three steps down the road. And then the industry wants to put on our, what would Chris Nunes do bracelet, right? Like, I've gotten to a point where I'm stuck. What should I do? And I've always thought Nunes would probably wouldn't have found himself in that situation to begin with. So, you know, like I don't want to go down a path and then ask what Chris Nunes would do. I'm trying to authentically be me and all my leadership capacities because I'm probably the only one that would have found myself there. And so I'm the one that needs to get myself out. Um, do you, Chris, rely on other people's advice a lot or do you are you pretty intuitive in the fact that you know you're 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 working through what you're working through to get yourself out of a situation i'm i'm still phoning a friend you know 30 years into this i'm phoning a friend and you know the folks on this group i'm phoning um you know my go-to person is uh two, two people really um uh, for a majority of the issues are uh, Janet Bartnick. Um, hmm. We've had a relationship and uh, we were both those young, youngish professionals at, at Rocky Mountain Revenue Management School in like 2003 um, and had a great relationship with Janet. The other one um, that I'm sad to note is retired uh, is Stacey Larry Dickey. Over the last uh, probably 10 years um, and especially during COVID, you know, Stacey and I were like, What's New Brothels doing? What's Woodlands doing? How are you doing this? And it just was a really good, you know, collegial um, idea of, hey, listen, I'm stuck. And so, you know, just because you see people like me at conferences and you think that we have it all held together, please, um, we're, we may have a good facade, but we're still searching for answers because we don't know anything. You can't know everything, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, for example, if, you know, if there's a, you know, a, a DEI question, I'm going to, I'm going to be reaching out to Lakita Frazier, you know, we have a great relationship there and we've, you know, again, have grown together over, especially the last like seven, eight years uh, that I've, I've known her. Um, you know, I, I used to call, um, uh, Randy Burkhart actually is his name. Uh, he was not many people know him, know him, but he was just somebody I met in Colorado again, 20 plus years ago. And we had this great relationship where I would call him of, Hey, how do you do this? What do you, do, what do you do this? I bumped into a guy, um, uh, David Goodwin out of, uh, Maryland. Um, and we had some great talks, um, over the course of, uh, you know, starting about 10 years ago. And there were issues about our artificial turf. Hey, I don't know how to do this. What do I do here? He's my call. So, Again, I, I reiterate, just because you think, you know, and 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 Tom and Shane and, and Jay, you guys have great facades and you, you look like you got it all together, but we're all calling each other. You know, we're all calling to figure out how to, you know, do the best thing we can for our residents. That's really interesting to say that, too. And I know we're we, we're on a part of a group where we we will ask some questions here and there. I, I think that I would go out on a limb to say that a lot of people look to you chris for those kinds of issues and and i don't know i'm I'm gonna first state let me just go back to the one word game i'd love to do that another time where we just say people's names and just see the different react like shane my one word i bet you can get 101 different answers and, and so uh, anyway that's for another day so i got a little story about chris while we wrap up here i know we've taken up a lot of uh, a lot of chris's time which we're really appreciative of so have you ever been compared to justin timberlake or like a rock star chris because i'm about to do that all right so i've been i've been i've been, uh, I've been accused of being bruce pearl's twin uh, mm, um i see that, I, see that. I think auburn. i've said that before. Is, he, is he at auburn now yeah or tennessee I mean, tennessee he oh, no. was at tennessee i thought oh he might be at auburn, auburn. yeah i absolutely i absolutely see that i don't know if i've said that to you before but i've said it to other people before so anyway, uh, we were at I, I, one of the schools, and some some southerner, I think it was from Tennessee, goes, you look exactly like Bruce Pearl. And I'm like, what do you mean? And so I'm like, Google, I'm like, oh, crap, I do. <laughs> Funny. 
That's that's great. And, and that's what I love about these conversations, how they kind of go into these different directions. And where was I going with Justin Timberlake? It, it had nothing to do with looking like Justin Timberlake. But but mm -hmm. I, I could tell you <laughs> that there are people out there that uh, it's a funny little story that you, uh, Shane, Jay, you may not know. Chris knows, a few others know. And I'm not going to name any names, but I, I was a part of a virtual conference in 2021, early 2021, before we could really all get back together for annual conferences at the state. And so we had to get moderators together. And of course, being virtual, we were able to get really whoever we wanted if they were available and interested, the best of the best. And of course, we reached out to Chris. So Chris did a couple sessions virtually for us. And one of his moderators made her, moderators get on and said, yeah, I've been looking forward to this for right before he got on. I've been looking forward to this forever. I'm, I'm a big Chris Noons groupie. And I'll never forget hearing that. I, I just That's want awesome. to say, hope that as a parks and rec professional that that i could just say that i have a, a groupie out there because that is that is quite impressive and, and chris was very humbled by it um you know he he's, he's his name goes a long way whether it's springfield college or just everything that he's done in the field or as a mentor as things we've talked about so chris seeing that you have groupies okay again something we all who knew that that could happen in our profession but seeing as that's the case Give our listeners something. Tell us about some things that you're working on. What are some things that they could be looking at, looking out for in the future? I'm excited to work with you on a project that's going to be launching hopefully around conference time with NRPA, the Professional Development Roadmap. Um, you can speak to oh. that. You can speak to whatever. But tell us a little bit about what you're working on before we let you go today. You know, I'll, I'll tell you one more funny story uh, about this gentleman in California. He called me up and he said, Chris News, you're my spirit animal. That one <laughs> took me off of my my rocker there. OK, um, but no, um, you know, again, it was an outreach of of Dirk uh, uh, that uh, Dirk and I during COVID uh, developed this thing called the Professional uh, Development Roadmap. And then, um, you know, he passed and it was just sitting in my you know, on my computer screen and, and I just through conversations with Tom, just reached out to Tom and said, hey, you want to write an article together? And he said, sure. And so we took us really just about three weeks to to bang out an article. We believe that's going to be on um, in the September, October uh, edition of NRPA. So that's really, awesome. really exciting. I'm working on some new um, sessions right now. Um, I'm working on um, some sessions uh, regarding consumer behavior in parks and recreation, as well as um, macroeconomics of parks and recreation. So really trying to understand how all these things that you see of inflation rates and unemployment rates and, you know, cost of shipping kind of filter down and actually impact, you know, our parks and recreation, our ability to provide services. I am actually getting off of some um, committees uh, that my term is ending. Uh, Copart, I've been involved with uh, Copart for many, many years, which is the Council on Accreditation for the academic uh, institutions. And so I'm going to have some more time, I think, to be creative and um I'm really looking forward to that and trying to figure out what are the next big questions um, that the profession has and try to answer them with content. Some great stuff. We're looking forward to it. Jay, Shay, anything you'd, you'd like to ask Chris before we let him go today? We could probably go for another hour. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we, could more do, than we could do an hour alone of just the one word association. Oh, yeah, that got fun there. I want to hear more about Bruce Pearl too. I mean, all, all these. <laughs> I I think these. This has been an awesome conversation, Chris. Thank you so much for everything, your time. I know that you had to clear some time in your schedule for us. We really appreciate it. And Jay and Shane, I'll see you on the next one. I think Jay, it's it's tag. You're it. You're you're our next host. Yep. I got a guest lined up and uh, looking forward to it. Awesome. Great. All right, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Great job. Great job. Tom. See you. That was, that was great. See you, ma'am. See you guys. Have a great, have a great weekend. Thanks. Yeah. You too. I, I thought, I thought news was great. He always is. Yeah, he is. He is. I, I totally wanted to go with a layup here. So, you know, you can't, you can't get much better than news. He's going to have, comments. I had him on my list. So I'm know, sure you did. Up. And now, yeah. and now Ryan just entered all three of our lists. Actually, I've already, yeah. talked. you've already reached out. Yeah. I've already talked to him. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to tell us that. Yeah. Well, you know, he doesn't he didn't know what smartless was, so he wanted to see what the actual <laughs> I was talking to Tom yesterday when we were trying to figure out how we were setting this up. And I was like, How are you talking to people about it? Because if I talked to Ryan and I asked Ryan, you know, 
have you ever heard of the smart list podcast? And he was like, no. And I was like, okay, well, this next part will be interesting. <laughs> you know, well, and to be honest, the person I called, I did that pro that approach and they did not know about smart list. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's going to happen probably more than we think, or at least more Some. than half the time. So, which is fine. I think that actually, in a way that makes it more fun. Yeah, Smartless is going to pick up some listeners because of this. I bet but, you they do. How much? How much of what Chris said could you all sit back and say? I mean, this is the, the I think the beauty of what we're doing, and I know it might not always be the same with every guest, depending on our experiences. But how much of what he said could you have intervened and said, "Hey, yeah, I've experienced just that with you." Yeah, the cool thing about Chris is Chris doesn't change. You know what I mean? You catch him at a conference. You catch him before he's presenting. You catch him three beers in at a social or you catch him on a podcast always great advice always you know always hits the mark he it's never like oh you caught chris at a bad time you know what i mean like chris is always great always influential always has great things to say a total e on widget like i don't know what his other is maybe it's wonder i don't know but he loves to help people he loves yeah he he embodies it as much as like Biedenstein does. Like he really does almost everything he's doing, whether it's service or mentoring or what he's doing with us. He really is an E. He's a huge E. I'd, I'd be shocked if he didn't score high on enablement in the working genius concept. Yeah. He, and he's inspired me to do a lot of that too, you know, is, is watching him and how he interacts with some of the, the people that he's mentored. It's made me look at the way that I do it differently. But you also have said, you don't really like believe in mentors. Uh, I don't believe in the power of them as much as others. I could call noons for anything. I could say, dude, I'm in a, I'm in a terrible situation. I've gone three steps into this and I can't find my way out, but I never would. And he's definitely a mentor of mine, but I just wouldn't do it. So, yeah. And he would, obviously he said he would call, he calls. I could, we were into COVID. I could imagine talking to anybody like I probably should have. And we hopped on a, that Zoom chat and there was yeah. about 12 faces and we talked about COVID. But I don't think I ever just called you and said, wow, COVID's kicking my butt. What do you think? I've just, I'll figure this out. You know, it's been yeah. always my mindset in that. So I, I think mentorship is very important, but I don't lean into it like others. I don't want to go to the director school. I don't want to be a part of an alumni group. I don't want to be in a group chat later on with all the other people at director school. Like, you know, I look at it differently probably not something to put on our podcast but just want to be in a cabin with a case of monsters i thoroughly enjoy noons every time i talk to him i did not i didn't know who today's was so i was happy to see him yeah all right gentlemen we thank chris noons again had a great time talking to him and to both of you and and for all of our listeners we'll see you the next time on reckless great job tom we'll see you next time jay see you guys guys. appreciate it